Happy Monday, Inspire Beauty. I'm super pumped. Um, I'm always pumped on Mondays. They just fill my cup. It's my favorite time. Um, honestly, I got to talk today in a live during uh, for our coach sneak peek that's happening this week. Make sure that if you are talking to people about our team, about our community, that you're adding them into that page. I love seeing you guys stepping up in there in leadership and bringing people into that group, tagging people under the pulse and interacting with them. Um, but I went live there and every time I go live on one of those, I always go back and retell my story of how I got started. And honestly, I think I love Mondays the most because it takes me back to my teacher days. It takes me back to the classroom and that I feel like I get to see those light bulb moments for you guys. I get to see you guys growing uh, in your businesses and just as human beings. And it's like, such a freaking honor to be able to see you guys do that week after week. Proud mama bear over here. A um, couple of announcements. I don't actually have slides today. I do have one slide I'll show, one image I'll show, but I don't really have slides for the content because <clears throat> we're going to be going through this kind of back and forth together. Uh, very interactive. So make sure you have pen, paper, pencil, whatever you use to take notes because you're going to definitely want to do this with me while, while we're uh, walking through a little bit of reflection on the quarter and uh, goal setting coming up into the next quarter. Can you guys believe that 25% of the year is about it? 25%, insane. So um, announcements though, April Book Club was announced. It's going to be the book Own Your Every Day. I left it in the other room, otherwise I'd hold it up for you guys, but that's what we're reading in April. This weekend is not our first meeting for book club. I want you guys to have time. I know Amazon's probably slow with shipping right now, um, and all of that. So I wanted you guys to have time to be able to get the book in your hands and to get started on it. So our first meeting is going to be Saturday, April 11th. So make sure you mark your calendar. That's going to be our first Saturday chat for that. The following Saturday, I don't have a lot of information on it just yet, um, but I'm thinking that if it is virtual, it's going to be something that our whole team can do together. So just keep in mind that the super weekend is going to be actually virtual now. Um, it was supposed to be an in-person face-to-face. We do these quarterly. If you're newer around here, uh, every quarter we do a Beachbody Super Weekend meetup in our local towns. Um, and this one is going to be virtual. So the coolest part is we can have our entire team join us, right? Which like, I love the last couple Dallas ones. I've been able to have some of you guys with me there. And it's just been so fun to have like my teammates with me. Um, and so this one, we could potentially just have like all of our teammates with us. I think that would be Pretty freaking cool. So mark your calendar for the following Saturday, April 18th, is uh, Super Weekend. And so when I get more information, I'll pour that your way. Um, and then one more mark your calendar. April 6th, that's a week from today, is when our April Coach Quick Start is going to begin. Coach Quick Start is like our new coach mentorship. It's our new coach training. Uh, this is going to be the second time we'll run it. It is our new thing that we'll run every single month. It's a 10-day group with the weekends to play catch up. So Monday through Friday, play some catch up if you need to. Monday through Friday, play some catch up. Um, and it's basically your opportunity to, number one, move the needle forward on your business if you feel stuck. Even if you've done it before, I can't tell you guys how many trainings I went through as a newer coach. I went through all the trainings. Every time my coach was like, I'm doing a push to Emerald. I'm doing a coach training. I'm doing a rock the basics. I was like, sign me up, you know, like every single time. Cause I was just hungry to learn because I wasn't there yet. So if you don't feel like you're there yet, um, by all means, join the training, right? Uh, if you're new though, and you've never done a training, this is an awesome opportunity to dive in. Um, and if you did it with us in March and you didn't complete it, like you got life happened, things happened, right? You got stuck, do it again. There's no shame. I literally don't ever put shame on you guys for those things. Last thing I want to talk about before we dive into looking at the quarter and looking ahead at the next quarter is looking at where we are right now, you guys. It is March 30th. We got two days left. And February was an incredible month for our team. Outstanding. When I look back at the last leaderboard I posted for how many lives we helped change and jumpstart on their health and wellness journey. It was just, it was mind blowing. Um, and part of that was because we had team cup in February and team cup usually helps keep you accountable. Um, and so one thing that I love to hate about team cup or I hate to love about, I don't even know how you put it, but one thing about team cup that I feel, uh, is a disservice, I guess, is that we get done with Team Cup and because we don't have these 
people that we feel like we're accountable to like, Oh, if I don't help one person, then I'm going to, it's going to make my team suffer because we don't have that accountability anymore. All of a sudden we just don't, we let it slide. Right. And the reality is even in February, regardless if you helped five people, you helped three, you helped one, you helped none. The only person that it impacts is you and your business and the people that you could potentially be helping. It doesn't impact me. It doesn't impact anybody else, right? So even if I was on your team cup team and I'm cheering you on that you're hitting your goals, that's awesome and all, but it's really all about you, right? And so in March, if you let off the gas after team cup month, I want you to like really analyze why is that? Like, why did I, why did I build up all this momentum in February just to kind of step back in March? Um, I'll tell you this about this business. It's never a good idea to step back because it's so much harder to get back going once you take your foot off the gas, right? And so I'm not saying that your foot needs to be on the gas like full blast all the time. Um, what I'm saying is you should be steady. We don't wanna be a stick shift coach where we're like, I'm all in. Okay, I'm, uh, I gotta step back. Oh, I'm all in, I gotta step back. We wanna be more of just like a slow and steady coach that's continuing to be consistent and show up. So. If you are not at Success Club, we've got so many people who are either at zero, two, or four right now. I wanna help you, I want you to get there. Um, and so some quick posts, or some quick posts, some quick ideas, some quick tips. Um, number one is your mindset. If you don't believe that anyone's out there that needs your help, mindset adjustment number one. If you are feeling like Everyone's saying no. If you've heard yourself say, oh, everybody's saying no. Nobody wants this right now. No, this is too expensive for people right now. Or, oh, nobody wants to do this because of what they're, if you found yourself saying that, your mindset is stuck in a place of lack. We wanna be in a place of abundance. I wrote down today, uh, it's totally under my computer right now. <laughs> I wrote down today um, something along the lines of motivated women who are ready for change are coming into my inbox. Motivated women who are ready for change are coming into my inbox. They're out there, they're out there. But when I'm stuck in this place where they're not, I'm in a lack mentality, of course they're not out there, right? So mindset, affirmations, tell yourself that it's possible because it is. Um, number two, call to action posts. If you haven't done a call to action or a side-by-side -side transformation, these are great opportunities for you to show people proof of these products, right? The other thing too, you guys, is you could ask a challenger or a close relative or somebody, a close friend of yours on Facebook to share your post after you share it. So let's say you put a call to action up with a transformation and then you ask Susie, who's in your challenge group, she's crushing it. And you say, hey Susie, you're crushing it. I, like, I love the way you show up in our group. Would you do me a favor? I just posted a transformation on Facebook and I'm honestly looking to like get a few more people into our group to start off the month. Would you mind sharing that post and like giving a little bit of information about why, you know, you recommend people to join me, that would mean the world to me. And then what you're doing is you're putting that now on Susie's circle of influence. And Susie's recommendation speaks a lot louder than you because these people know her. And so they already have built in trust. So try that, right? Try that and see if there's anybody in Susie's circle, I'm just using a fake person obviously, right? Um, that maybe could benefit from being a part of your group, right? Um, Follow-ups, follow-ups, follow-ups. At the end of the month, that is what you lean on, is everybody you have spoken to in the past that wasn't ready. Even people who ghosted you. Guys, just because somebody doesn't respond doesn't mean they don't want what you have to offer. We all know how many times we've opened up our phone in the middle of running around, you're standing in line at Target, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, I just opened inside this message, but I don't have time to reply to it, and then you totally forget that it was even there, right? So give people the benefit of the doubt that maybe they've seen your posts, especially if they're still watching your story or maybe liking your content and they're still ghosting you, maybe they've just lost your message in the shuffle and forgot to respond. That's totally human. Um, when you're having conversations, you guys, another tip is to believe in people. If people are unsure, breathe the belief into them. I know you're going to be amazing at this. I know you're going to love this. I know that, you know, you're, you, you want to lose like 10 pounds in the next three months. I know it's possible because I just did it, or I have a girl in our group that just did it or whatever. Right. But breathing belief into people, that's our job as coaches. And so if you are having these conversations and you get to somebody who has a, 
a hurdle, an objection, an obstacle in their way, you're the one that's supposed to help them navigate because you're the one who's a step further ahead of them. So help them navigate their concerns, help them navigate, um, you know, maybe what's, what their fears are, what's holding them back. The other thing is create urgency in your conversations, right? So talking about, you know, 10 rounds, talking about, um, talking about bar, bar blend, the promos, right? So anything that's on promotion this month, create urgency. Um, in your story, you can talk about how the, about the energy of your groups. So tonight, go in your, you know, go into your story and, and talk about the energy that's happening in your group. Share a testimony, share something that somebody said, even if they're not your personal challenger, if they're in the group and the walls that you're in, share about it. Share with excitement, get on video and share with excitement about what's actually going on in your group and like blow it up, right? The energy starts with us. And so once you do that and you share a success story or you share something from your group that was so powerful, you share about the energy in the group, um, tomorrow, everybody that's viewing that, you can say, oh my gosh, you know, I love that you're checking out my stories and you know, I'm just, I'm so over the moon excited about the energy that's in our group right now. It's out of control. And I just think you'd love it. Do you want me to send you some more info on this? Right. And get in their inbox, anybody that's viewing it. It's an opportunity for you to do that. So hopefully some of those quick tips, oh, I dropped my pen, will help you here at the 11th hour, at the witching hour, uh, before the month is over. You guys, there's so much time still. There's so much time still. So if you're sitting here and you're like, mm, I'll just try next month, I have bad news for you. That mentality is gonna bleed into next month. And it's not, it's not a matter of people joining you or not, it's a matter of the wrong mentality, right? And so help people today, help people right now. Don't save it for April, don't save it for another month. Uh, people need you. Okay, let's get into it. Why in the heck, three months into the year, would we stop and look at our goals that we set for 2020? Like, why would we do that? The majority of the world right now, like, <laughs> I don't know if you, I haven't had a single person pause and say, hey, um, remember the goals you set in 2020? How are those coming along? We're about a quarter of the way through the year. Like, most people in the world right now are not focusing on if their goals are coming to fruition. So the gift right now that we have is that we actually are in an environment and in a community that promotes this sort of, um, lifestyle and this mentality. Um, and so first of all, I love and I'm so thankful for that. But it's important you guys to stop. This is something that I realized because I've been through years where I set a big lofty goal for myself in whatever area of life. And I get to the end of the year and I'm like, well, that didn't happen. Okay, I'll try it again next year, right? Has anybody been there where you set a goal for yourself in any way? And you just get to the end of the year and it never happened. <laughs> then you set that same stupid goal again. Yeah. Oh, humanity. Um, ultimately, you guys, life distracts us. And right now is especially important that we talk about this because life is derailing people. I see so many people that say, um, you know, 2020 was supposed to be my year, but it's not. And it's like, are you serious? First of all, like, dry your eyes, girl, wash your face, right? Like, what's wrong with you? Um, the year is not over. But I think it's, it's important right now that we understand that life can distract you. And ultimately, when we don't achieve our goals year after year after year, it's probably because we were not intentional with our behaviors, we weren't intentional with our actions, and we actually didn't take moments like this to pause and say, hold up, am I on track? And so that's kind of what we're doing tonight, is we're doing like a, a nice little pause, a little hold up, are we on track? Because we don't want to lift our gaze November, December, and realize that we got so far off course and just feel frustrated, right? So before we dive into anything, we have to first look at what we set for 2020. And if you're on this call right now and you're like, Brittany, I didn't set any goals for 2020. You're in luck because <laughs> you get to set some right now. Yeah. So we don't have to wait for another new year to set goals. We can set them right now. So first of all, We've got to check in. We've got to look at the goals that we set for 2020. And you might not have those out right in front of you, but I want you to take notes and I want you to like write this down and highlight it and like underline it 17 times that you need to pull those goals back out if they're not right in front of your face. And you need to look at what they were so that you can do an honest check. And if you didn't ever set any, 
then you need to go back and listen to my recording right at the new year, right uh, prior to new year, where we did a vision casting Zoom together and go ahead and follow along with my Zoom training that I did and cast the vision for your year. So in the, it, when we did this vision casting Zoom in December, um, we talked about all areas of life. Because remember guys, we read that book at the end of the year with, with our um, Your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt. Remember that if you were around? Yeah. Um, so we read a book and it really helped us see how to goal set in all areas of life, right? For the purpose of tonight's Zoom, I'm not going to be looking at all areas of life. For the purpose of tonight's Zoom, we're gonna be looking at success club points and rank growth, because those are your two business benchmarks that really show, are you, are you moving the needle forward, right? And so at some point in your business, whether you're brand new and you just went through Coach Quick Start, or you're about to go through Coach Quick Start, or you've been in this business a while, I'm sure you've set goals for yourself of like, I want to help three people this month, or I want to hit Emerald rank. Okay. So looking at what those goals were, check in. How many success club points did you really have in January? How many did you really have in February? How many did you really have in March? And did you set a goal for yourself of how many people you were going to help this year? And are you on track for that? If you set a rank goal, like I'm going to be diamond by summit. I know a lot of us had said that at the top of the year. There was a, there were a lot of our coaches that said diamond by summit, diamond by summit. Summit's real close, right? And the rank cutoff for summit is coming up soon as well at the top of June. So really only about two-ish months away. Are you on track for that? Did you grow your team in January? Did you grow your team in February? Did you grow your team in March? Okay, so checking in. How close have you gotten? So maybe you haven't achieved the goal, uh, the goals for 2020. When you look at your goals for 2020, a couple questions to ask yourself as you're looking at them. How close have you gotten? For some of you, maybe you've already achieved something. Maybe you look at the goals and you're like, oh my gosh, I actually already achieved one of my goals. Check. Like, this is awesome. Um, some of you might look at the goals and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm like really on track. I'm really close to achieving this. And I just need to, I just need the, the gift of time, right? And consistent actions. And I'm, I'm going to do it. And, and maybe some of you feel like you're going to achieve the goal ahead of schedule. So maybe you said it would take you all of 2020 to achieve a goal. And maybe you're like, wow, well, I'm looking at it here a quarter into the year. And actually I could probably achieve that by the midway point of the year. So maybe you're ahead of schedule. If you're ahead of schedule, if you're like the person that I just spoke to, that you're, you're getting close or you're on track or you're ahead of schedule, the worst thing you can do is stop the momentum. Is to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to hit this goal. I set this goal for 2020 and I'm almost there. I'm just going to sit on back because this is like, it's just going to, no. That's the worst thing you could do because when you sit back, you lose all the momentum that you built up. Okay, so my encouragement if you're ahead is, is don't slow down. Just keep going because wow, like you could actually surpass the goal you set for yourself. Pretty freaking cool, right? Now, what if you're behind? What if you're behind? So there's two courses of action for people when I see that they're behind on their goals. Typically people will do one of two things. When we look at our goals and we're not there yet and we don't see it, we don't see if it's possible, right? in our current circumstance or our current situation, how we're gonna actually bridge the gap from here to there, when, when we don't see that, the instinct for the masses is to give up on your goals. But we are better than that. Uh, we don't need, like, it's like a what's the point mentality, right? Like where people are like, ah, oh, what's the point? I'm so far away from it, what's the point of even trying, right? And I'm sure every one of us can think of a time in our life when we felt that way about something, um, but I just wanna be the person to nudge you today that instead, you don't have to just give up and say, what's the point? You have another option. You can reassess your goal and you can ask yourself what's truly possible, right? Be honest with yourself. Was your goal too lofty or is it just a lack of action and intentionality, right? So each... You know, when we're looking at goals, I have written down three questions um, that kind of go along with what we talked about on our goal setting Zoom for the year. So again, a really great, uh, 
a really great Zoom to watch if you have not set any goals. But three questions would be, what am I going to create? Basically, what am I going to build this year? Um, am I going to create a new rank? Am I creating uh, a big boom in my fitness groups? Am I creating wealth for my family? Right? Like, what am I creating? Um, what am I, what am I going to sell? But basically, like, what are my target benchmarks? Like, is Success Club 5 a target benchmark every year? Is Success Club you know, 10 year benchmark each month? What, what are you, how, how many people are you bringing in each month? Those two questions, what am I creating this year? And what am I selling this year? Those are adjustable. Because right now, if you look at, maybe you set the goal that you were gonna be, you know, a one-star diamond coach this year, but you're still sitting at Emerald, well, you might need to reassess what, how many people you need to help from now till the end, how many people you need to bring in from now till the end. You've got to kind of see where you're at. You can adjust those. The goals that I don't want you to adjust though are your personal goals. So when you go back and you look at your goals from uh, the top of the year and you're looking at like what you said you want to do spiritually, what you said you want to do relationally, um, emotionally, maybe in your own health journey, don't, uh, those, those shouldn't be adjusted if you're not there yet. Those should encourage you to level up. Yeah. Do you see like the difference? Business goals, like those can be adjusted. We can adjust those. Your personal goals though, I want you to do like serious gut checks and say, okay, wait, I said I wanted to do this in my relationships, but I'm not. So I actually need to like look at my priorities right now. Um, because there's goals, you guys, like when, so the adjusted numbers, for example, the, you know, how many challenge packs each month, this and that there's goals that you set and then there should be stretch goals like each month i number my my board in a stretching kind of way like man i'd love to help 20 people this month guys i don't help 20 people each month i don't but that's a stretch goal because man that would be so cool now i have my base minimum goal i will not go a month without helping at least three people that's a base minimum so like that's the goal, but like I'm actually working for a stretch goal. So you see the difference and neither one of them like make me feel better or worse about myself, but they just are a tool to keep me on track. Okay. So after you look at your goals, so this is going to require you taking like a little homework time when you're done. After you look at your goals, you've got to ask yourself what area, where do you need to double down? Where do you need to double down in? Right? What area? Be honest. January, February, March, what's gotten your attention, right? Like that's a big question to ask ourselves. What got my attention this year? Did my business, like if I set business goals, did that get my attention? Did, if I said I want to be diamond by summit, did I give attention to that goal? Meaning I was talking to people about joining my team. I was talking about it on social media. I was participating in every coach sneak peek, right? Did that get my attention or, or did I kind of put that on the back burner? Ask yourself what's gotten your attention and then ask yourself, is that contributing to achieving those goals? So if you asked me what, what got my attention two weeks ago um, or a week and a half ago, I would have told you Tiger King got my attention a week and a half, two weeks ago. <laughs> Tiger King, however, <laughs> is not helping me achieve any of my goals, right? And so like, it's silly, it's silly, but it's also true. If you've been giving too much of your attention to things that have nothing to do with your goals, you gotta like, okay, bring it on back, right? I gave too much attention to that and it's not contributing. So what area do you need to go and double down in, triple down in? Like, is it, I need to send more invites because I'm not getting enough new people in the door for my challenge group. Or I need to make sure that I'm on action hours because I have not been doing my tracker. Or I need to get into coach quick start because I've been so lax about my business and I need to realign my vision and my focus of why I'm here. Um, whatever it is that you need to double down on, go and do that, right? Ask yourself, what's stopping you? When you look at that goal and if it says, you know, I want to be a one-star coach in 2020, or I want to be a two-star premier coach in 2020, or whatever you're looking at. I want to help three people every month. All, you know, I want to be a success club all-star. What's stopping you from getting after that? 
What's preventing you from getting after that? And then what would it take for you to get to that goal? So look at what your goal was, look at where you are now. If your goal was, again, I'm, I'm just using some, some that I heard at the top of the year. So if you're like, that wasn't my goal, that doesn't have to be your goal, like please hear my heart. But I heard a lot of people say their goal is Diamond by Summit. So what's stopping you from getting to Diamond by Summit? And what would it take for you to just get that goal? So if you're looking and you're like, well, I have five coaches right now and I don't have any emeralds, well, okay, What's stopping you? Maybe it's your own invite process. Maybe you gotta get honest about that. But what would it take? Okay, well, it take three more coaches and I have to help two of my coaches go Emerald. Now I know what it's gonna take. Now I can laser focus on what I gotta do. So no BS about it, you guys. Make a list of like, what is it actually gonna take and go do those things. Okay, I wanna share the screen really quick because the next tip is once we know, once we've looked at our goals, we've like honestly assessed them, and once we are looking at like, where do we need to kind of double down right now? Where are we off track? This is straight from uh, Girls Stop Apologizing. And if you've never read Girls Stop Apologizing, it's a really great book, um, helps you navigate goal setting. Uh, it, it's just awesome, I think. I think it's awesome for a brand spanking new coach. Uh, so if you have new coaches joining you, like this might be an awesome gift for them. Uh, it might be an awesome book club gift for a new coach pod. I'm trying to give you guys leadership ideas too as you're onboarding people onto your teams. But this is a really great book um, for new coaches, I think especially, but also just in terms of navigating where you're trying to go. So in this book, she talks about this roadmap idea. And part of the issue is we get lost like I'm here at the start, January 1st, right? And I'm trying to get to 20, you know, the end of 2020. And here I am at mile one. And all of a sudden you guys, you see on mile one, maybe mile one was, I was going to be diamond by the end of the first quarter. Honest truth moment right now, you guys, I said that about my second business center, that by the end of the first quarter, my second business center would be diamond. Now has my second business center moved forward? Am I on track towards that goal? Yes. Is it actually diamond yet? No. So there, there's just like an example for me of something in my business that was a mile marker, right? Okay, so that's a mile marker right there. Let's say though that my mile marker was diamond by mile one. By the end of the first quarter, I want to be diamond in my business center. And let's say <laughs> I'm looking at my goal today and I look at my back office and I actually don't have any coaches. I didn't sign up anybody. Or maybe the people I had ended up quitting the business, leaving, whatever. And I see, you guys see those trees over there off to the side? And I, maybe instead of being at mile one, maybe I'm like way over in the trees, like totally off course. Like I didn't invite anybody to the business. I didn't grow my team. In fact, my team got smaller. I'm like way over there. I'm off track. It's okay when you look at your goals, if you feel like you're off track. The thing is you guys, we feel lost because we've gotten off the side of the road. That's it. You're just off to the side of the road. Like, look at how simple that is. If you're like, well, Brittany, you're in the trees. Just move over to the left a little bit and you'll be right back on track towards your goal, right? It'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm just a little off track. But what our world tends to do is we're like, oh, I'm off track, I've lost it. And we think the goal is the problem. The goal isn't the problem, my friends. It's that you're off track. Don't, don't take the goal away, get back on the freaking road, right? And so it's not, it's not that, it's not being off track that's the problem. It's that we're just not, it's not the goal, sorry, that's the problem. It's that we're off track, right? So this roadmap, if you've never read her book, basically start would be like the beginning of your journey. It finishes achieving your goal. I'm using this and breaking this as like a year. So the start of the year, finish of the year. And each marker, this would be the first quarter. Mile two would be like June, halfway through the year. Mile three would be when we're getting into the fall season, right? September, October. And so having mile markers along the way so that you know, okay, so if my goal was I wanted to help I wanted to help 50 people in 2020 start their fitness journey. I want 50, five zero people to help me. Well, by mile two, I should probably be at about 25 people, don't you think? Cause like that's halfway. So maybe mile one, just so that I have good measure, maybe by mile one, I wanna help 13 people. So if you're sitting here at the first quarter of the year and you're like, okay, if I wanna help 50 people before the year's over, that means, 
that I have to at least help 13 people to be on track. Am I still on track? And then I look at how many people I've helped January, February, March. Okay, I helped nine people. I'm not quite on track, but the month's not over, so I could still help some more people. Or I'm not quite there, but I can make up the distance and still get to 25 by the end of June. You see how this helps you navigate how far away you are from something and how to break it into bite-sized chunks? Falling off the road too, you guys, when I'm over in the trees, that's not failure. That's part of the issue too with like our, the world we live in is like most people get over in those trees and they're like, I'm a failure. I failed. I'll just give up. This isn't for me. That's a dang lie. It's, you're not a failure. It isn't a failure. All that it's telling you is, hey, boo boo, you're in the trees. You should probably slide a little to the left. It becomes a teaching tool. Okay. So being in the trees, being off the path, being, you know, if you're not quite to mile one, so let's say it's that 13 people, but you only helped nine so far, that doesn't mean you failed. That means I need to look at my actions and maybe they weren't enough. It's a teaching tool. All this is is a teaching tool. It's not a shame mechanism, right? We got to remove that. one. It's also important to know that when there's a deadline in front of us, for some reason, we like to hustle. So if I'm here at the start and I'm like, I got the whole year ahead of me and I didn't have these benchmarks along the way and I wanted to help 50 people, it's really easy for me to just meander around all year long and get to the end of the year and say, wait a second, how come I didn't help 50 people? But, all, but when there's a deadline, if I was like right here, it's like November 20th and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't help. 50 people yet, all of a sudden I might start hustling to get to my goal, right? So these benchmarks along the way also help keep us honest in our push so that we don't have to wait till the goal's right in front of us, till like I say, hey, by the way, you have two weeks until summit cut off for your rank recognition. You're like, oh my gosh, this was on my heart all year. Since last summit, all I wanted was to, you know, achieve X rank. And here I am two weeks away from it. I'm going to get to work. You don't want to get to that point where it feels like you're pushing for something and where it could be too little too late, right? That's the worst feeling ever. So start now as if the goal, as if like you have to hustle now, right? Okay, a couple more points and then we're, we're landing this, this plane. So after we get out that roadmap, you guys, and we look, you know, are we achieving the benchmarks along the way? What was your big goal for 2020? Have you broken it down into bite-sized chunks and road mapped it out? Are you in the trees? Do you need to maybe move a little to the left and get back on the road? Um, the question comes back to intentionality, right? And so we need to audit our calendar. Audit our calendar. One of the questions I wanna ask is, are you using the time you have correctly? About a year ago, I did this same, very similar Zoom, and I shared the idea of time blocking or a block schedule. And I wanted to pull up these numbers again because I think it's mind blowing, mind blowing. Every one of us have 168 hours each week, 168. I'm gonna give you eight hours a day for sleep, so that's 56 hours, okay? I'm gonna give you eight hours for work Monday through Friday, standard nine to five, that's 40 hours. I'm going to give you, so you all got to sleep for eight hours a night, which some of you don't even do. Let's be real. Um, especially you guys with kids. Bless your souls. <laughs> and then I gave all of you guys a nine to five job that you're working, which honestly, some of you right now don't even really have that with what's currently happening, right? I'm going to give you 35 hours to eat, shower, commute, whatever you need to do. I'm going to give you 35 hours. That's seven. I'm sorry. That's five hours a day. I'm giving you five hours a day to eat, shower, travel from place to place, whatever you need to put in that little, little boat. After I took out your need to sleep, your need to work, and your need to eat, shower, and like live, you still have 37 hours left in a week, which breaks down to about five hours a day. So when you say, I don't have time, that's a dirty freaking lie. Because all y'all knew what Tiger King was. <laughs> right? Like, and I'm saying it because I watched it and I can't get those hours of my life back. And Lord, like those people are real in this world we live in. That man was almost a president. Um, no, no, he wasn't. But like, seriously, 
37 hours, you guys. We have five hours a day. And I know everyone's life is different. Everyone has different circumstances. I get it. So I'm being very like cognizant of that. You know, like you have to care for little ones. You have to, you know, maybe you're volunteered for these things. But I think right now, especially as we're being kind of forced to slow down and forced to reevaluate what's getting our time, I think it's an important question to ask, you know, is my time being given to the things that are truly what I desire in this world? Are they my true priorities? So block scheduling, I'm not going to get into block scheduling so much, but basically what I do, you guys, is I sit down and I map out, okay, when am I working? To, like, sit down with your calendar. If you work from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day, then you block off 8 to 4. That can be color-coded in one color. And if you're like hyper interested in, in this whole idea, literally Pinterest search time blocking and you'll get all the resources, including probably like printable blocking calendars. Um, but color code it. Okay, so before 8 a.m., well, what time are you going to get up? Let's say you get up at 5 a.m., you do your workout. Okay, maybe then 6 to 7 is getting ready. Then you have a little break from 7 to 8. Maybe that's time to get on social media and put out your stories for the day or to send out some invites or, you know, whatever. Like, once you see where your hours are going, it's really eye-opening is what I'm trying to say. Because again, we get so wrapped up in life in the day to day to day that we end up not using our time well, myself included, you guys, myself included. So it's not that you're not working hard. I believe it when you're like, Brittany, I'm working so hard, but I'm just not doing it. You're maybe working hard on the wrong things, right? And so after you look at your goals, after you take a second and you audit, you know, um, where you are on that roadmap and you do a little inventory with yourself, check out your calendar. How can your calendar help you to achieve these goals? And then you wanna realign with the vision. Go back, if you haven't, if you never goal set, go listen to that call. I will post it on the team page, I'll put it fresh in your face so you guys have it right there in front of you. But realign with the vision that you set for the year or do it again, start a new vision. Who are you? Who do you want to become? I keep thinking, you guys, about, you know, when I, 10 years from now, I keep thinking about this. 10 years from now, we look back on this moment. Are we going to look back and be like, man, my house was filled with fear. We ate so poorly. We consumed so much unnecessary news. And all that it did was cause us to worry and panic over things. Or are you going to look back in 10 years and say, oh my gosh, my family, that's when we finally got to connect. That's when we finally slowed down. That's when we finally sat at a meal, at a table together and had meals. That's when I finally started to figure out how to meal plan. Ten, like that, you know, when you, wouldn't it be cool if you look back and you said, coronavirus was when I said yes to my transformation. Coronavirus was when I finally figured out how to meal plan. Coronavirus was when I finally decided I was worth it to do personal development. Like, wouldn't that be so cool to say like, this was the time and this is like the line in the sand that you drew and then everything else is from that? Or do you want to be the person in 10 years that looks back and says, that's why I'm where I am today in a negative way, right? There's a Rise podcast um, where she takes you through this whole idea of casting your vision of who you are, who you want to become. And that's what I, I use the Start Today journal. Um, and that helps me to really realign. If you're like, I struggle with knowing what my day-to-day -day dreams are or what I want to do or who I am or where I'm going, may I suggest getting a journal? And you don't even have to buy her journal. You can literally do it on a piece of notebook paper. Every day she writes down five things she's grateful for and 10 dreams that she's going to achieve. She writes them in the present tense as if she's already achieved it. So I am a 10-star diamond coach, right? I am a full-time beach body coach. I am retired from the classroom. She writes them in the present tense so that it's in her mind that it's already, it's done. It's already achieved. Now she just has to put in the work, right? So you don't even have to buy the journal to do this. You can literally take pen to paper every morning. And so that's what I do. After I do my devotion, I have my start today journal that I bought and I go through that exercise. But she has an episode that I'll also share with you guys on the team page that guides you through this whole process of vision casting, okay? And so realigning. Realign with your vision. This is a great opportunity to do that, especially some of us who have maybe more time in our day than we are used to having, right? Um, and the last question I want to leave you with is, where do I need to grow in 2020? When you get to the end of the year, what's the one thing you want to look back and say, I did that? 
right? When you get to the end of the year, at the end of 2020, we'll do, we do it every year on our team. I can't wait for it. It's one of my favorite things we do in December. We, we kind of reflect on the whole year. We ask a lot of questions, hard questions, joyful questions, right? We really look back on our year as, a, as its entirety, not just for the business, but for our lives. Because I really believe in that, you guys. I don't just believe this business is shakes and workouts. I believe it's life transformation. Um, and when we do that, I want you to be able to remember this moment and say, okay, in March, Brittany asked us, what do I, wanna, what do I want to uh, say I did that or I achieved that? What's that one thing? And you know what? I did that because I did this to grow, right? So where do I need to grow in 2020? Where do I need to grow right now? Like once we get off the call, where do I need to grow? And just start, the only way to get to those places, you guys, is to chip one day at a time. I can't think about four months from now of, man, am I going to, you know, be able to invite people in, in August? No, but I can control today. I can invite people. I know what bootcamp I'm, I've got set up. I can invite them to that, right? And so what's the one thing you can do right now so that by the end of the year, you can look back and say, I did that. I did that. I'm really proud when I did that, right? So let me hit stop on the